Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kate Furianti, and I would like to welcome you to PMI's webinar series, Bridging the Skills Gap. These webinars focus on ways your company can address the skills gap. Um, today's topic is Manufacturing Day, and our guest speaker is Brian Ormanek from RPAC, so thanks for joining us. Hi, good so to be here. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Brian. So let's go ahead and discuss what Manufacturing Day is. Manufacturing Day is an opportunity for manufacturers to open their doors and show their local community what manufacturing is, addressing common misperceptions. This is a chance for you to show your community what you do, highlight the economic importance of manufacturing, and draw attention to rewarding manufacturing careers. This is your chance to dispel outdated myths about manufacturing, inspire a new generation of manufacturers, connect with potential customers in your community, Learn about manufacturing extension partnerships that can improve your efficiencies and workforce skills and boost your profits. Visit other manufacturers to initiate business relationships. And also, learn what's being made in your community. Studies show that students who attended Manufacturing Day events were 84% more convinced that manufacturing provides careers that are interesting and rewarding, and 71% more likely to tell friends family, parents, or colleagues about manufacturing after attending the event. However, Manufacturing Day is not just for students, and when promoting, you should reach out to your community at large, including parents, educators, media, customer, and suppliers. So when is Manufacturing Day? Manufacturing Day is typically held the first Friday in October, so for 2019, that would be October 4th. But we all have crazy schedules, and sometimes it can't happen. So definitely any day in October would work. So now I'm going to pass it over to Brian. Um, he has been working with RPAX Manufacturing Days for the last few years. So I'm going to pass it over to him to go over his pra best practices and experiences. Sounds good. Thank you, Kate, and thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, I'm an application engineer at RPAC. We build packaging machines, and uh, we're a proud PMMI member. Uh, first heard about Manufacturing Day uh, a couple years ago. I uh, got involved with different schools and uh, community events, um, mostly around kids that are middle school to high school, uh, interested in STEM classes that could uh, lead them to uh, careers in manufacturing, packaging, and engineering. Um, so a uh, slide here is how to get involved in Manufacturing Day. It's really pretty easy. Um, I, I basically signed up, made sure it was okay with my company, and uh, host the event myself. Uh, I keep it pretty simple. Uh, you, you're flexible in what you actually want to do. Uh, what I decided was to just sign up one hour time slots uh, so people could visit for one hour with a group. And um, that's about it. I show them the equipment we're building and give them a quick tour. Uh, so that's the basics, I would say. You can get uh, more elaborate with uh, slideshows, um, movies, video segments, uh, and there's a lot of uh, resources on the manufacturingday.com website uh, for, for those reasons. Um, so I would uh, say in order to get involved, <clears throat> you go to uh, manufacturingday.com, that's MFG for short, and uh, just sign up your company for the event. Uh, you create a, a profile. Uh, with, I would say, recommend a warm welcome message. You know, you, people are reading your uh, message and about your company um, versus others that they might choose. So make it personal and, and make it interesting. Uh, I'd also recommend telling people what to expect and uh, who will host the event. You know, I talk about uh, the machines that we build and where we're located, and uh, myself as the host, I uh, let them know who I am and uh, what they would see when they come to visit. Uh, automated machines, uh, everyone knows robots, that's a good draw, and any other you know, descriptions of uh, the type of machines and the type of people too. Engineers, programmers, machinists, assemblers, electricians, um, you know, cover, cover the different careers. Always think about the technology that they would see because hopefully that's what they're interested in if they're on the page considering a visit. And then also the careers. It really is mostly young people that are in school, whether it's middle school, high school, or trade school, usually leading up to college to figure out you know, what kind of classes or career path that they want. 
And uh, last, I would say, describe what your company does. You know, in a way that inspires curiosity. You know, and excitement. Um, don't be bland. Uh, do the unexpected. You know, really uh, make it interesting for them and, and something that's kind of exciting. Think about your audience. It's uh, young kids trying to get inspired. Uh, once uh, your profile is posted, you know, people can find your event uh, by using a search. Um, feature on the website, you know, just a button. Uh, they could look for location by, uh, it's, it's currently in the U.S. and Canada listed, so they say it's North America, but uh, you generally drill down into the state, and you could enter the city or just, uh, you know, look for the whole state. Uh, I could look for the whole country if you want to have a really big travel day. <laughs> um, as people register, you'll get an email as the host, and uh, it'll have a description of the group and uh, a contact person. So that's your opportunity to see who wants to visit. And you can send an email back or give a phone call uh, if you want to find out who it is. And maybe you, know, you just want students and you don't want other people. You know, that's entirely up to you. Like I said, I think you have different options. I set up uh, time slots of one hour. And then uh, you do have the ability to limit the uh, size of the group, too. Uh, I think I do up to 10. That's about how many I could handle um, you know, myself. Um, it could be more or less. So they give you a couple of controls um, you know, for that day. Certainly when I'm on the floor, there's uh, a lot of people um, that are working on the machines or designing. And uh, they're always really helpful just talking to the group you know, that comes by. But it's pretty easy. I sign up myself, make sure it's OK um, with those in my company. They know what the day is. and. Um, more volunteers we get, or whatever volunteers we get, um, you know, I just take time to meet them at the front and uh, give them a tour of our company. Well, let's see. The first manufacturing day uh, was in October 2014 at RPAC. That's the first one that I hosted. I've uh, been doing them ever since. And um, that's what the, uh, during the profile or when people register, they could see um, you know, the map of what's located and uh, the date and times. And then they could register for a time slot that's available to visit on that day. Um, this also shows the, uh, the map was on the first page and uh, didn't all fit on one slide. So this is a description of uh, RPAC and what we do, um, what people will see, you know, what I described. Try to make it interesting and uh, you know, paint the picture of what they'll uh, expect to see. Uh, there's also photos. Um, and that's a good way for people to you know, see what the factory looks like, see what the building looks like. Uh, I threw in a couple of uh, drawing photos, samples of uh, you know, design and, and what I do. Um, but it's really, you know, it's really up to you. And it's, it's whatever you, know, you would want that would uh, invite people and interest them to visit. Um, I think the big reason here, the whole purpose of doing it, is uh, you know to make a difference, uh, to make an impact on uh, our industry as well as manufacturing in, in general. Um, and my biggest belief is any an organization, uh, people are the most valuable asset. So it, it's really the people that make the company, that make the organization, that make our industry. And this is what the event is about. Uh, it's about in, attracting and uh, inviting you know, people to join the ranks and uh, contribute you know, to the packaging and processing industry. I think most would agree that one of the biggest challenges facing any company today is finding and keeping good talent. Um, manufacturing days and open house events where thousands of companies uh, across the continent, uh, and schools too, I'll, I'll say that as well. It's not just companies that open their doors. Uh, schools are uh, also uh, part of that too. They usually show the, the labs or the classrooms or the, the STEM um, you know, activities that the kids do. Uh, so that's uh, also included. And uh, last year, there was a pretty good turnout. 275,000 people uh, were registered and participated uh, in nearly 3,000 events uh, in Manufacturing Day. Uh, to be quite honest, we've only had uh, a uh, modest turnout, I would say. A um, couple years, I'll have two or three groups. Um, last year, there was no groups from the public, but there were a couple of uh, people that I knew, one that I worked with, and one that was a very good friend, where their kids are growing up. And they asked me if they could bring their, uh, their son and daughter um, by, because they were considering 
careers in engineering or technology. And uh, I hope to get more groups, but it's uh, it's good to inspire anybody who you know takes the time out of their day to come to visit. So Manufacturing Day is produced by the National Association of Manufacturers, or NAM. Uh, that's a well-organized group. Uh, manufacturing Day creates an opportunity for people to learn about modern manufacturing careers. And Manufacturing Day shows students how to translate STEM skills, uh, that science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, the STEM skills that they're learning in the classroom, uh, into fulfilling career opportunities in a growing industry. Um, side note there, uh, STEM is really growing, and that's great. Uh, there's also STEAM, the A adds the arts to it. And there's Project Lead the Way is a government and a school initiative. So um, probably a lot of you have seen uh, Lego um, challenges and robotics challenges. And, uh, and that is growing. First Robotics is another one. Uh, it's really a great way for kids to get interested and use technology you know, that's available today and that's easy to use. You know, the apps, the software, uh, the building blocks, and these kits. You, know, you get Legos with motors and sensors. Uh, it's, it, it's great to see that momentum. And uh, Manufacturing Day is, is uh, just what it says. There. That's from the, the website. It's translating the skills that they learn in the classroom so they can visualize what they can do for a living. Uh, and it's great when they come uh, through our pack, and they see especially a lot of kids that aren't too much older than them uh, working on laptops and controlling these giant machines and robots. And you know, I, I think that it really inspires a lot. In fact, the biggest thing that most people say when it's all done, if they've got big smiles and enjoyed their visit, uh, is, "Wow, I had no idea. You know, all of that was this cool. I hope to be doing this someday." Uh, manufacturers are able to address the skill labor shortage that they face. That's why we're doing it and what people do it um, that participates. It allows them to connect with future generations uh, and take charge of the public image of manufacturing. Um, you know, in the old days, it was the 3Ds, dirty, dull, and dangerous. Um, those of you that work in uh, PMMI companies know that uh, that's a thing of the past. We've got great careers that are in bright uh, facilities that are modern and a lot of collaboration and a lot of technology being used. Uh, and this also ensures the ongoing prosperity you know, of the whole industry. So a lot of these points were you know, from the uh, Manufacturing Day website that I thought I would share. Uh, it, it's not really that old. Every year it grows. And the first Manufacturing Day uh, was in 2012. So this year will be the seventh year. OK, next. Uh, you know, this was interesting. They also had some top facts. Um, I took the top three that uh, I thought were most interesting, and the web link is uh, from their website. Uh, taken alone, manufacturing in the United States would be the ninth largest economy in the world. So these are stats about manufacturing in general, the industry. Uh, the nation with the higher uh, gross domestic product in 2017, you know, so who produced more than just manufacturing was the United States. China, Japan, Germany, India, the UK, and France. But uh, besides that, manufacturing alone produced more than all the other countries in the world. I thought that was pretty interesting. In 2018, manufacturing accounted for 11.4% of the GDP in the economy. And I think that's surprising. Most people just don't realize uh, what, what manufacturing contributes to the economy. And for every manufacturing job, there's three, four, five, depending on the metrics. Uh, of other jobs that create, you know, are created to support that. And uh, you know, a big thing about manufacturing is people drive by all these buildings you know, on their way to work or on their way to somewhere else, and they uh, don't get the chance to see what's inside or how things are made. And that's my biggest thing that I enjoy is how things are made. Most people go to the store, and they pick out something from the shelf, and uh, they just don't have the privilege to see uh, what goes into making the parts, designing the parts, uh, assembling them, quality control, all the manufacturing, uh, the packaging, um, distribution, logistics, material handling, everything it takes to get it onto that shelf where they just pick it up uh, and put it into their cart. So this is a great way to uh, show them how things are made and also um, hopefully inspire some young kids to find a career in, uh, in manufacturing. Uh, the last point I thought was interesting was uh, 
there's for every one dollar spent in manufacturing, you know, like I said, there's other uh, jobs that are created. There's another buck eighty two added to the economy, and that's the highest multiplying effect in any other economic sector. So a lot of things are tied to manufacturing and making things. Uh, oh, I did have a couple more. Uh, for every one worker, um, there's the three or four employees that are also hired. Um, manufacturing, I thought this was interesting, manufacturing consumes more than 30% of the nation's energy. Um, that's interesting, but it also shows the power of manufacturing. Yeah, it's, it consumes a lot of energy, but manufacturing is always about making something better. And uh, we take raw materials and energy and uh, turn them into products that people use and, and make their lives more convenient. In 2016, there were 2,500 firms in the manufacturing sector. This is interesting. Most of them are small and medium size. So of that 250,000, 245 are considered to be small businesses, and fewer than 500 employees. And in fact, three quarters, or 184,000 of those, were fewer than 20 employees. So it really shows that manufacturing is uh, small and medium-sized family businesses, uh, community businesses, and, and that's what I like about Manufacturing Day. It's everyone has a chance to open up the doors and pitch in, and it really is uh, about kind of showing back to the community uh, and giving them this unique experience once a year. Uh, a couple of photos and some more slides on the actual events. Um, this was uh, <laughs> someday, I hope there's a bus with this many people coming to our pack, but actually this was a, a PMMI. Uh, RPAC hosted a um, annual meeting a couple years back, and uh, that's what the, the front looks like. We've had uh, small groups, and uh, I hope someday we get uh, a group pouring in our front door just like that for a manufacturing day. Um, but that is a, fo a photo that I put on the website so people could see uh, you know what they what the building looks like and helps them uh, what to expect uh, during that day. You know, besides the manufacturing day itself, I've also had a couple of visits from uh, different school groups um, who I've gotten connected uh, with through PMMI and some of their education initiatives. And there's a school group on the left with a big robot that's me in the middle um, in the white shirt, and then on the right is uh, one of our engineers, David Gramley. Uh, hosting and talking to the school group about uh, the manufacturing engineering uh, aspect of it and the mechanical design that he does as he leads the team through uh, designing the machines that we work on. A um, couple of points about what inspired me. You know, really the big picture here is I felt like I got lucky uh, to find what I do. Uh, it's interesting. It's, it really excites me to work on a design, and then if we get to build it, uh, to see how it's designed, see if it's the way I thought it would be, or if the project team came up with something that was uh, smarter, better, or more interesting, and uh, see a whole bunch of people work on assembling, wiring, programming, um, and then you know testing and getting these machines up and running in our in our customers. So our customers, we just build the machines; uh, they need the machines to do some high volume. Uh, production and uh, they run them, you know, with their product uh, in their factories. So we are designers and builders of the uh, machines, which is referred to as an OEM, original equipment manufacturer. Uh, a couple of points here. So many people don't like their jobs, and uh, I guess you're lucky if you find one that uh, does inspire you and, and you enjoy. Um, I mentioned I felt lucky to have found a job, and that's part of the manufacturing day. Not everyone might get lucky. Uh, so I feel like uh, that's part of what I could do to, uh, to throw back and, and give someone a chance to find something that they enjoy. Uh, as most people, you know, they're engineering and technology. I was good at math and science as a kid, and people told me that I should be an engineer. But I didn't really know why uh, or what engineers did. You know, if I were to have a manufacturing day to be able to see uh, what the inside of a factory is or what an automated machine uh, does or looks like or who works on it uh, might have been um, much easier to find you know inspiration and, and find my way here um, but it, it was just luck for me um, you know instead I got lucky and uh, for me I think uh, drafting class it was a drafting class in high school is where I first kind of visualized okay here's what math and science uh, can do and connect me to engineering or design 
uh, and a job. And I like the drafting. It was the three views. I thought that was interesting to see the top side and front view. Uh, it, it was I was good at I was an art good at art when I was a kid, and that took it to like a technical level. And it was neat to me to think about how things can be represented in those three views, and then that's how someone has an idea. They puts it on paper or a computer, and then that's how they relay that information to other people that would make it, build it. Um, so uh, something about that class uh, really got me interested in pursuing the c career. Uh, two experiences that uh, I'm proud or, or privileged really to be a part of uh, was I got to work at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago uh, on an automated manufacturing exhibit. And uh, that's uh, called the Factory Floor, and it's been open for over 10 years. And uh, there's uh, the pictures on the top right are the machine uh, that assembles a Gravitron as a toy top. And it's a toy they were uh, selling in their store uh, but buying. And uh, it had a whole bunch of parts that were different uh, that would make for a really interesting machine, uh, plastic, metal, round parts, uh, gears. And uh, this machine uh, was uh, about 13 or 15 assembly stations. And it actually did disassembly too. So it assembled the tops disassembled them so it would be constantly recirculating. And then parts were put uh, up into storage and tended by a storage and retrieval robot overhead on a second floor and then uh, delivered back to the machine and feeder bowls and assembly uh, stations. And uh, that's me on the top right in the red sweater. And one of the greatest things was not only be a part of that, but to uh, surprise my kids, those are my twin boys, uh, Max and Jake, and one day I found out that they were going to the museum, and I arranged with the teacher to uh, <laughs> surprise them. So I hid just around the entrance, and I got to surprise them, and they both looked at me and, and said, Dad, what are you doing here? <laughs> so that was pretty cool. I got to uh, show them around the exhibit and the whole rest of the school. There were about uh, 10 different school groups, and uh, got to, same thing, show them what engineers do, what people that uh, work on machines get to build. Um, this is where I mentioned uh, the scheme uh, turns into teams, you know, the STEM, what uh, they were learning in the classes. Um, you know, a couple of visuals. There's uh, First Robotics is an annual challenge. It changes every year. Uh, VEX is another version of that, and that's the first picture on the left. Uh, you see kids with laptops, um, you know, doing things that uh, each generation hasn't had the ability to do before them. Uh, and you know, with technology, I'll also mention mechanically, um, things haven't changed that much. You know, over the last uh, 50 or 100 years, we still have motors and cranks and chains uh, and air cylinders. But I think the big difference, the big accelerator, is computers. You know, when I came out of college and I was the first person in my company to get Windows 95 from DOS and Novell. And, uh, and now I, I really think the advent of Windows, the software, and the hardware where people can do so much on a laptop, a tablet, a phone even, um, you know, servo motors and vision systems and barcode scanners and controlling machines through PLCs or PCs and robot controllers. It's really the software um, and the, the operating systems that have accelerated in the last uh, 20, 25 years since uh, I began my career. The picture on the right is pretty cool. Um, because of some of these events, I've gotten invited to, uh, in this case, it was to be a judge in a battle box competition at a local high school. And <laughs> those are my two sons that were watching these two robots uh, duke it out. It's just like the, uh, the show, if any of you have seen them, uh, battle bots. In fact, I think the show is back on the air, and it's certainly uh, uh, being done at a lot of high schools um, around Chicago as well as uh, the, the, the country. Uh, different variations on technology and challenges to uh, you know, get kids interested in pursuing a career. Uh, similar but different note on making a difference. You know, uh, I'd encourage everybody to participate. Sign up for Manufacturing Day. Um, you know, volunteer at local schools to talk with them or give them a tour. Um, I, that's what I've done, and it's been uh, very rewarding, uh, and it's great to make that connection. Um, you know, people will take notice. Um, in 2014. The Illinois governor to be Bruce Rauner, you know, visited our PAC uh, to talk about the importance of manufacturing, and uh, that's what our uh, facility looked like. And uh, I thought that was a pretty cool event. Um, somehow we caught his attention at our PAC. So um, just get started and, and make a difference. All right. 
Thank you, Brian, for sharing our PACS Manufacturing Day experiences. Before we end today, I wanted to share how PMI can help you with the Manufacturing Day. Um, earlier this year, PMI launched a matching donation program, the PMI Youth Skills Fund. That allows our member companies' dollars to stretch a little bit further when investing in the future of the industry. For any future workforce programs or events such as Manufacturing Day, any PMI member company can apply for matching funds. Those funds can go up to $50,000 annually. So this is something that can be used for transportation. So if a school is looking to have students come, it could help with the bus cost for that to your facility. It could also help cover lunch costs. So those are just a few little examples that it could help with. Um, so for more information on the Skills Fund, you can visit the website on your screen, pmi.org backslash skills dash funds. In addition to help funding Manufacturing Day and some other events, PMI can also connect you with schools and students to invite your, manu to your Manufacturing Day. We do have a network of schools throughout the country that we would be more than happy to connect you with. So, that ends the presentation. I do want to open the session up for any additional questions. So if you have those, I know we had a few throughout the presentation. Um, just feel free to, to put those in there. So Brian, um, first question is, what are some of the most popular questions you get asked from kids that come through on Manufacturing Day? Yeah, great question. Um, probably back to the basics. You know, They're trying to figure out how they could if they think it's interesting, they can. They want to figure out how they can, you know, get there themselves. And I come back to that math and science. You know, um, you know, I didn't say, but I was good at math and science, and not really good at the others because they were boring. You know, it's all about engagement, employee engagement, student engagement. Uh, so I did my math and science homework first because uh, I liked it. And uh, you know, like I said, I got lucky, you know, finding this career. I kind of stumbled on it, certainly stumbled on the opportunity to work at the Museum of Science and Industry. And Manufacturing Day provides more opportunity, so people don't have to get as lucky or they'll have a better chance to find their way. When they ask that question, I often say it's not doesn't have to be college. Uh, it could be local colleges, trade schools. A um, good example, um, one group that came to visit, probably the most humbling or you know, interesting group that I had was a group of uh, all women from uh, inner city of Chicago that uh, were going back to school uh, to learn how to do machining, to work in a machine shop. And most of them, you know, needed a job, needed a second chance, were supporting kids. Um, and that was pretty humbling. You know, they were trying to figure out how they could make a living doing something worthwhile. And, uh, you know, they were really impressed. They loved seeing what we were doing and um, not just the machining part of it, but then those parts get put into uh, you know, some pretty interesting automated machines. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, another question. They would like to know if a company should be a member of FMA or NAM to use and be a part of Manufacturing Day. Yeah, I don't think so. It's really open to the public. Like I said, uh, we're, I'm not even sure if we are. I just signed up. <laughs> if we're, I, we probably I agree. Are, and, um, I think this is open up to anyone. You just have to register on mfgday.com, but you do not have to be a member associated with either of those organizations. Um, next question, how do prospective visitors learn about a hosted event? Uh, through the website when you created uh, the profile. You describe the event. You describe what the people will see you know, at your company and who will be their host. So it's really through the website. Um, and I suppose, you know, maybe word of mouth, um, once your, you know, friends and family and people that uh, work at your company, they could spread the word. But I think people generally look for uh, what events are available in their nearby area. You know, they put in their city and then they could see uh, the nearby events. And that's probably how, you know, people find you. And then like I, I said, when they want to register, you know, the host gets an email and you can call or or make or uh, send an email back to confirm that visit once uh, the once the request is made. I would also add to that if you have a, a school that has a STEM program, a robotics program, a technical college, just bring some information over to you to the school. The school I know that Manufacturing Day has a few 
pamphlets that you can print out. So even just taking a few minutes to drive over to a local school, maybe posting some flyers up, just letting them know about it. Um, so Brian, is RPAC doing Manufacturing Day again this year because someone doesn't see it on the website? Yeah, I saw that. Actually, I've uh, been busy, and uh, right after I'm done with this webinar, I'm going to renew my profile last year because it's so easy. And uh, good point. I will get us signed up later today. <laughs> and one, one final question. How far in advance do you normally or recommend someone schedule on Manufacturing Day and start planning for this event? Yeah, I would say it's pretty early. Um, you, you know, mainly when kids go back to school or teachers the week before as they start planning, you know, their uh, their year. Um, I think now it's pretty quiet with the summer. Uh, so if you sign up within the next uh, couple of weeks, I would say that's probably when teachers are going to start looking and uh, and students. So you know, it's uh, early October. So if you're in say a month or six weeks before, I think that's about the time frame when people start looking. Okay. Great. Thank you. Well, Brian, thank you again for joining us and um, sharing your experiences for Manufacturing Day. You're and welcome. And actually, Kate, one last point I want to make is you said uh, there's a PMMI does uh, have uh, some funds available to do some matching and help with like a, a bus um, you know, to the event. And actually I, I do want to say that that's in working with the school groups that have wanted to visit. Some of the groups that have visited, it's just a teacher that has pushed it through and to get you know, a classroom they had to get a bus. But from talking to other teachers, that was some of the objections is, well, we have to get a bus and this and that. Uh, so at least uh, it's great to see PMMI you know, making the funds available uh, to uh, run a bus or pay for lunch. You know, that, that is something that has come up commonly where I went to schools, but they couldn't come to us um, because of the bus or logistics, so that will certainly help. Great. Well, thank you so much, and thank you to everyone else who attended today. Um, this is the uh, How to Host a Successful Manufacturing Day webinar series. So thank you again, and enjoy the rest of your day.